I'm drinking out of a mug that says bookworm and proud, even though I haven't read a book in like two months. Still bookworm and proud though. <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> I haven't filmed anything since I think August um, and it is like the middle of November right now. I legitimately just woke up. Um, I haven't even had my breakfast yet. Um, I do, however, have to have my vitamin C and uh, vitamin D because like the true vampire that I am now, I literally don't see the sun anymore. I never go outside. Um, and so I need to take vitamin D supplements so that, you know, I don't die. <laughs> okay. Now that I've gotten my daily dose of the sun, it's really weird doing this again. It's really been so long since I filmed anything. I genuinely had no intentions of filming anything because I have two videos that I've been trying to edit for like two months um, that I haven't been able to get through edits on uh, just because I've had no motivation or will to do anything. But today I finally feel a little bit better. I've been feeling a little bit better for the past like couple weeks, um, but like not good enough to like film and like be present very much online, hence why. I haven't been, but now I feel like I'm starting to get over that and I, I feel like talking. I want to talk, which is a good thing. My voice is really hoarse this morning. Hold on, I need more water. <laughs> so I was thinking of doing like a Q&A type of thing, but I didn't ask anyone for any questions uh, because I don't feel like asking anyone for any questions and I just want to give you like a little bit of a life update, but you know where I'm at, what I've been doing. I'm going to file my nails the whole time I do this. This is very casual, if you couldn't tell. Like I said, spontaneous. I didn't plan this. Um, I cut my, I'm dropping everything. I, I cut my nails yesterday because I was playing the piano and they were way too long and it wasn't working. So now they're just a mess because I cut them and I didn't file them. I really need to fix them. So that's what I'm going to be doing as I'm talking to you. Also, sometimes when I'm talking about difficult things, it's hard to just like, you know, look in the camera and directly focus on what you're talking about. So I need a bit of a distraction. Hence, the nails. But yeah, anyway, um, my life update. Where have I been for the past couple of months? I uploaded a video and then kind of just disappeared even though I had intentions of um, uploading very consistently and doing a lot more stuff, which I know I always say like I come up with a plan for myself and then something happens that alters my mood or my life or whatever and then I just can't um, and I disappear for a little bit and that happened again and you know like I am always trying to work on that, but sometimes things are out of your control and I have a very complicated relationship with being online and being a social creator and I have still yet to find the perfect balance for how much of myself I feel comfortable putting online and how much of myself I want to keep private. What parts of myself do I share? How much is oversharing? How much is not sharing enough? And I, I don't know what that balance is. I'm still trying to figure that out even after six years of doing this. I don't think I know what that is and I don't know that I have like an entirely healthy relationship with creating content in this way and I'm still Still trying to figure that out so I appreciate all of you who always tell me to take the time I need to uh, focus on myself when I have to because um, it really does scare me that like one day nobody's gonna come back if I take a break um, or take some time off because they're just gonna get tired of me because there's someone else who's newer and shinier and um, better <laughs> at doing this whole thing than I am because there are plenty of people who are all of those things But sometimes it starts to take like a real toll on me and then I get like really comparative and Very insecure and I really did not used to be like this And I think ever since I started doing YouTube and especially since I started taking YouTube way more seriously Like this mentality has kind of completely overtaken the way that I view YouTube and creating content and just myself and social media and everything and it's become so toxic and I just genuinely like don't know how to overcome it like I try my best and I do have some like coping mechanisms but it always just seems to come back because we live in a society that just by nature and by nature of what I do on here anyway um, you just are compared to everybody else. You, everyone's comparing you to everyone else and you're always comparing you to everyone else and it's so hard to not do that. One of my least favorite things in um, like relationships and friendships especially is when people like 
compare themselves to you. Like when friends start to get like competitive with each other and start like saying, well, you're like this and I'm not like this and like putting themselves down because of it or just like constantly feeling like jealous of their friends and stuff. Like that's one of my least favorite types, like relationship dynamics, if you will. Like I don't like when relationships get like that. It really, really bothers me because I have never been that way. I've never been the type of person who was super jealous of friends or um, like people around me and I was never super comparative until recently I noticed myself not getting jealous of friends because we'll get onto the topic of friends in a little bit um but like just getting super super comparative and I think it's in part because of some relationships that I'd had in my life and also in part because of YouTube and social media and everything and my hair is such a mess that I literally slept on it while it was wet like two nights ago and I haven't like done anything with it because I haven't been leaving my house or seeing anybody so I haven't tried to like look presentable in a while so I hope my hair looks okay-ish. If it doesn't we're dealing with it being messy I don't care. Anyway that tangent aside what I was saying is that I've noticed that some of these relationships that I'd had in my life had like deeply affected me beyond ways that I think I'd ever even noticed and now I'm starting to notice that like I'm becoming so competitive with things that I was never competitive about before and things that I never compared myself about before and now suddenly they matter so much when they never mattered before. And it's just really, really hard to deal with yourself becoming the type of person that you couldn't stand. <laughs> um, and I feel like that's kind of one of the things I've been going through a lot lately. And it's just been, I don't know, painful to come to terms with and painful to just try and get over. I don't think a single relationship in my life like specifically made me this way or anything like that. But I think just having that type of energy around me in different environments around different people eventually influenced me more deeply than I thought it had and it has now affected the way I think about things and now I have sometimes become the type of person who gets like really comparative in a way that I don't want to be ever. The thing is I say that but I have always compared myself to other people. It's just now I'm comparing myself to other people in ways that I didn't used to compare myself. So maybe it's just my old mentality um, shifting and adapting and latching onto something new, which I think um, is very common for people with um, eating disorders. Like a lot of the time, like your behaviors will just like shift and adapt. You kind of just change things that you used to do into something else, but it's basically the same thing. It's just adapted to your new thought process or your new environment or whatever it is. And I think that's just translating over into this aspect of my life now. So yeah, that's one thing I have been struggling with a lot lately. I've talked about it a little bit on Instagram. I haven't really been posting on there either, but in the time that I have, I have talked about it a little bit and talked about how it's really hard to watch other people function when you just feel like you can't and like you just don't know what's wrong or like how to get yourself out of it and I feel like that's definitely one of the things I've been comparing myself in a lot recently like I just see other people going about their day and doing things even if they're sad even if they're depressed or struggling a lot with um aspects of their life or anything but they're still doing it and I used to be able to do it and lately I just I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't do anything and I've always been very much an advocate for letting yourself not do when you can't because I feel like that's the way that you can like overcome things sometimes you really do have to push yourself through it otherwise you really get stuck and then you just you can't move at all anymore but sometimes you really do have to let yourself just not do anything for a little while because you've been doing way too much for way too long way too quickly and for me I think this time around honestly like it was a combination of both. Like I really had to let myself not do for a while, but I'm now at a point where I'm like, if you keep doing this, you're gonna stay stuck like forever. <laughs> and I think that's kind of where my headspace has been at. I know this all sounds like really sad and like I sound like I'm being like really harsh on myself or I'm just in like a really bad negative thought spiral. And it's not like I'm not in a negative thought spiral, um, but I do wanna emphasize that I do feel much better than I used to feel. Me last month wouldn't have even been able to sit here and talk about any of this. I would have just been crying the entire time and I would just would have been feeling like completely miserable. But now I like feel that cloud in my head clearing up a little bit and I feel myself starting to feel again and starting to, I don't know, want things again and want to try again. And it's nice to not feel so, so hopeless and helpless. Um, and isolated like I used to. The thing that I feel like I'm still struggling with more than anything else is this like 
deep-seated feeling of loneliness that I have also talked about a little bit on Instagram. I think everybody's been feeling this to varying degrees, but especially since COVID, like, because everyone has had to be so isolated and alone by nature of the situation, um, everyone's been feeling like incredibly lonely and incredibly isolated. And I feel like a lot of people, they've also shared with me in like DMs and stuff about their own personal experiences of like losing friendships and um, relationships and stuff that was like really difficult for them and very much heightened by and exacerbated by COVID. And I feel like I've definitely felt a lot of that myself. And that's been so, so hard for me. I don't want to talk about this for too long because um, it just genuinely does make me very sad. And I had a good crying session about it the other night, but I have always talked about how like friendships are like the most important thing in the world to me and um they like matter to me more than anything else and like friendship is one of the biggest values in my life and like i have always put so much weight in my relationships with my friends and the people i surround myself with have always been so important to me and they've always supported me and i've never felt lonely because i don't have friends i felt lonely for other reasons but i've never felt lonely because i don't have my group of friends and for the first time in my life, I have felt so incredibly lonely because I feel like I don't have people to turn to. Again, I don't want to talk about this for very long. And it's not like I don't have anyone in my life. I, I want to make that clear. It's not like I don't have anybody to turn to. I do. And I'm very, very, very grateful for the people I do have in my life. But it's really hard to lose people that you thought would always be around. It's really hard to have some of those people around, but not have them in the way you used to have them, whether that's because of distance or communication or whatever it is. It's so hard to watch these relationships change so drastically and to feel like you can never have what you had before back. It's been very hard for me. Part of it has absolutely been my own doing because of my own like coping mechanisms. When I feel bad, I isolate myself and I just don't talk to anyone, which is terrible. And it has definitely contributed to my loneliness and has made me feel way more lonely and way more sad. However, there are other like factors as well. And it has made me feel very, very, very alone in a way that I have not ever felt before. And I think that's one of the biggest reasons I have had such a hard time doing anything in the past few months. So yeah, uh, we're gonna leave that there, but I just wanted to talk about that and say that like that's something I have been dealing with. And I want all of you to know that if you feel that way, if you feel lonely, if you feel like you have lost people in your life who are very important to you and technically they're still there, but they're not there in the way they used to be anymore, you're not alone. I don't have a solution for you. I just, I just want you to know that like it happens. Um, people will come and go. People will change. You will change. And everything isn't going to stay the same. And that can be really, really sad. And it's okay to feel really sad about that. But it doesn't mean that it'll never be happy again. People don't talk about how much relationships affect you, like friendships, um, specifically non-romantic relationships affect you in the same way that they talk about romantic relationships. And I've talked about this before, I think in a video briefly, but like it's, it's just as painful, I think, to lose someone. And okay, like technically I can't say this because I've never been through like a very, very intense romantic breakup, but like I fully, fully believe that friendships ending can be just as painful when you've known people for like basically your entire life and that relationship somehow comes to like a really messy messy end or even just like a very slow like fade out that can be really painful <laughs> and it can affect you for a long long time anyway that's that i had other things i wanted to talk about <laughs> i feel like in general i just haven't updated you all on like my life recently or like what i've been doing over the past few months or even like what i was doing the few months prior to these past few months and like I feel like I had a lot of new experiences and like I did a bunch of things that I just like didn't really talk to you all about um and one of those things which like is semi-related to what I was talking about before is that like I started dating which was very interesting um I didn't want to talk about it when it was happening because I, I just didn't want to I like to keep certain things in my life private um but like I did start dating downloaded the apps 
just one app went on a couple of dates they did not end well <laughs> but that was like a new interesting thing um i experienced i am 24 years old i turn 25 next month and i'd never really been on a real date yeah it was a very new experience for me don't want to say wouldn't recommend because like i learned things but like at the same time it wasn't fun <laughs> it was kind of entertaining it was a little bit entertaining got some good laughs out of it got some good tears out of it can relate to um some taylor swift lyrics a little bit more now just a little bit like not like not really not like i went through a heartbreak um but like it was you know it was a good experience it was a good learning experience but yeah that's something new that i've done in the past few months i did delete the app i got very tired of it um and i don't know might re-download it at some point again but not not in the near near future because yeah I, I need some time to move on from those things but speaking of taylor swift her uh red album taylor's version came out the other day my camera very rudely died while i was in the middle of talking about taylor swift so i don't know where that cut me off but i listened to red taylor's version <laughs> and i am obsessed with it um red was never my favorite taylor swift album my favorite taylor swift album is speak now so when that re-recording comes out don't talk to me i'm gonna lose my mind when we get enchanted re-recorded I can't think about it right now. We're talking about Red. I'm obsessed with the 10 minute version of All Too Well. My favorite lyric is probably um, the second part of the bridge where she says, they say all's well that ends well, but I'm in a new hell every time you double cross my mind. I'm obsessed with that line. I think it's so good. The vault tracks from this album are so good. I'd heard Better Man before, but I'm obsessed with Better Man. And I am in love with I Bet You Think About Me. The music video is great, but like nothing new that song has taken me out it's taken me out like completely i'm obsessed with it sometimes i think i might like it more than all too well it might be in my top five favorite taylor swift songs of all time at this point it's so good i'm obsessed i'm truly truly obsessed it's it's an incredible re-recording um i i love it i can't wait for all the other ones um but yeah i've been having the best time crying like that's that's all i need sometimes and taylor swift delivers every time every time i need a good cry just put on a Taylor Swift song and it, it does the job. Also, Dylan O'Brien playing Jake Gyllenhaal in the um, short film destroyed me. Dylan O'Brien was literally like my first love. I was like in love with him in Teen Wolf. I was never like into celebrities before that, but then I watched uh, Teen Wolf and I became obsessed with Dylan O'Brien and I watched everything he was in, as did like every other teen at the time. Um, but yeah, so when I found out that he was gonna play Jake Gyllenhaal in this short film, I lost my mind a little bit. This really like brought me back into like 2012, like fully i felt like i was fully reliving the year 2012 because like dylan o'brien was on my screen again i was listening to red i was literally in my sophomore year of high school again like that's literally <laughs> that's exactly what happened it truly felt like i time traveled um and it was a great experience and now i can't wait to go back to eighth grade um and listen to speak now taylor's version so can't wait for that to come out. What are some other things I've been doing? Well, I've been painting a lot recently, partially because I, I decided to paint something for my best friend's um, birthday. I wanted to paint her something so she could put it in her room because she had recently redone her room. That's what initially inspired it. So I, I painted something for her and then I got like super into it because I hyper fixate on things and I got super into it. So I kept painting and I've been working on this painting of a scene from Howl's Moving Castle. It's not finished yet at the time of me filming this and probably won't be by the time I upload it because I still have a little bit to do. It's almost done. But yeah, it's this um, scene of the like cottage in the like meadow in Howl's Moving Castle. It's one of my favorite scenes in the entire movie. I just think it's so beautiful. So I decided to paint it. And I'm really proud of it because uh, this is like the third painting I've ever done. Fourth, third, fourth or third painting I've ever done in my entire life. And the second time I've ever like tried to paint. The other times were like just messing around for fun mostly and this was the actual like besides the one I did for my friend the first time I really really tried to paint something I'm pretty proud of myself for someone who doesn't really have much uh, skill or experience in painting I feel like it's turned out pretty well so far so that's been really fun and yeah apart from that I've just been playing some music and um, getting ready for my reading journal to come out uh, which has been 
super super exciting and also been causing me a lot of anxiety <laughs> so if you don't know i have a reading journal called the a clockwork reader reading journal being released this december the original publication date was actually um supposed to be september 7th but the date has changed now it was pushed back to the 14th and now it's pushed back to the 21st of december because of all of the shipping delays that have been happening in publishing it's really hit publishing super super hard so it's been a really big deal and it's pushed back a lot of um release dates for things so yeah it ended up affecting the journal which is really sad um but thankfully it's still coming out before christmas um so you can get it before christmas if you would like to and before the new year which is really important so that like you can start the journal at the beginning of the new year if you'd like to even though it's not like a yearly journal you can start it whenever you'd like um but it's nice to have one at the beginning of the year or at least i think so so yeah the reading journal is coming out in um like about a month, a little bit over a month now, and I'm so excited and so stressed out. Um, I'm probably gonna do some like heavy-ish promotion in the coming um, weeks because it is coming out soon, so please um, look forward to that. I hope you're all excited about the reading journal. I'm so excited about this reading journal. I could cry. I will cry when I finally see it in stores and stuff, and if you've pre-ordered it already, thank you so, so much. Um, that really means a lot to me, and it really helps out a lot, but yeah, I'm very, very excited about the reading journal. I'm going to give you a flip through very soon. It's going to be the next video I upload. Um, I've already filmed it and everything. I just have to edit it um, so you can get a whole flip through so you can see every single page inside of the reading journal and um, see what it's like in case you're um, putting off buying it because you don't know um, what the inside is like then you can see for yourself. But yeah, I'm really, really excited about it. So that's the other thing I've been like thinking about and focusing on recently. But yeah, I feel like that's kind of every update that I have for you at the moment. I also completely forgot to mention this, but I'm seeing BTS in concert on December 1st, so I'm really excited about that too. That's another big thing that I'm doing. That's literally like less than two weeks away at this point, so um, yeah, if you see me at the BTS concert in LA, say hi. I'm gonna vlog the entire thing. I'm so excited. I can't believe I'm finally gonna see them. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm just glad that I felt good enough today to talk to you all a little bit. It always makes me feel better, so I don't know why I always put it off, because it truly, this like, was cathartic for me, and this made me feel a lot better. So hopefully for some of you listening, this helped you a little bit if you haven't been feeling the best. Like I was talking about earlier, how I get like really comparative with myself, I judge myself and I feel like I'm not good enough at this or that, but I think I've been trying to like get myself to refocus that and think like, what am I good at? Like, what is it that I do that is different from other people that sets me apart in a way that makes me me? And I feel like that thing for me, per personally is that I'm good at talking to people and I think people like listening to what I have to say. So sometimes when I get caught up in my head and I'm like, we have to make something super artistic and beautiful and like visually pleasing and just like well-crafted and I put a lot of pressure on myself for that when it comes to like making videos and stuff, I have to refocus myself and remind myself like what you're good at is talking to people and sharing your experiences and sharing your stories and your thoughts and people resonate with that and that's what I need to focus on and that's what I bring to the table and that's what I would like to continue bringing to the table because I think that the connection that I can build with people is like really special and a lot of you have made me feel that way and I, I hope that some of you feel that way as well. So yeah, I feel like this video was super nonsensical and I'm sorry if it didn't make much sense at all and was all over the place and super scattered, but um, I hope that it at least brought you some comfort and um, it was good to see you again and good to talk to you again even though I don't really get to see you but you know what I mean but yeah thank you all so much for watching this video if you'd like to follow me on any of my social media all my links are in the description box as always I do have new videos coming for you and new stuff coming for you and I'm very very excited to share it all with you and I look forward to seeing you all again soon and you will see me again soon I promise this time um but thank you for always giving me the time I need I love you all so dearly and I will see you in my next video bye Thank you.